Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. I decided today that I wanted to make bagels. And the reason why was because for my Lazy Man meals, which are explained on my website, I made a lot of mashed potatoes this week. I cooked 20 pounds of potatoes, boiled them in water, in two 10 pound batches, I used the water twice and therefore I had a lot of really nice starchy potato water and I like to use that for making bread. But I decided to make bagels today just for the fun of it. Bagels are found ev everywhere. I mean, I can go down to the warehouse store, which is just within walking distance and buy some really good bagels. But I thought it would be fun to make bagels. And the potato water made me think of that because many years ago down in the city, there used to be a really nice bagel shop. It was called like the New York Bagel Company or the New York Bagel Factory, something like that. And they had really, really good bagels. Whenever we would go down there, we would stop and get some bagels. They had on eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper, some menus, because you could order bagel sandwiches while you were in there. And to keep them from blowing off the counter, which was right near the door, whenever the door was open, they had the menus weighted down with paperweights. And the paperweights were potatoes. And the first time I saw them, I thought, aha, they're using potato water to make their bagels. A lot of bagels are made with plain water, but potato water, makes really good bread, whole wheat bread, bagels. It's fantastic stuff if you've got it. So let me get into the ingredients I'm going to be using for making my bagels today. For my potato water, I have between these two bowls, one and a quarter cups, which is about 300 milliliters of potato water. This is hard here because what I do is I freeze my potato water as soon as it, I, it's cooled after boiling the potatoes. If you store it in the refrigerator within a couple of days, it turns bad, it's not usable. So get it frozen right away. This is a thought, obviously. And then I have two teaspoons of active dry yeast. You can use instant, it doesn't matter because we're gonna be proofing the, re the yeast in this recipe. I have one and a half tablespoons of sugar, three and a half cups, which is about 1.1 pound, or one and pound, one and a half ounces, or 500 grams of bread flour. That's figuring five ounces per cup. I always weigh my flour because I get a better measurement. And then I have one and a half teaspoons of salt. Optionally, we are going to be boiling the bagels during one of the steps. So you can either boil them in plain water or you can add salt to the water or sugar. Gives it a little bit of a different flavor. Some even add vinegar to the water. And then if you want to garnish your bagels, make an egg wash with egg and water and then you can garnish them with sesame seeds, poppy seeds. I'm going to garnish some of my bagels today so that I have a a variety. So those are the ingredients that I'm using. Yeast likes a nice warm place to reproduce, don't we all? So you want to heat your potato water up to between 105 and 115 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 43 to 46 degrees Celsius. Mine is 113, so that's good. Sprinkle the yeast on top and then the sugar let all that sink in and just let that sit for a while. You can stir it up later on. And if the yeast is good, this is called proofing the yeast, it should foam after a while and we should see a nice foam on the surface within a minute or two. My yeast is all wonderfully foamy there so I know it's alive and active. Now, I wanna start off by putting about half of my flour, just roughly, half the flour in a large bowl, add my salt. You can use less salt, by the way. One and a half teaspoons seemed like a lot to me, and I was thinking of cutting it down to one teaspoon, but I decided to go with what I had in the recipe. And then I'm gonna add my yeast, but before I do that, I do wanna stir this up. As I mentioned earlier, I wanted to stir this up after it all dissolved, just to get any yeast up off the bottom of that measuring cup. Nice and clean, nothing on the bottom, perfect. 
and then I want to stir all this in. What I'm going to eventually do is move this to a stand mixer and knead the dough. But at this point I can just mix it up and get this well mixed together. I moved my dough to my stand mixer. I've got my dough hook in place. Here's the rest of the flour. I'm going to incorporate this flour a little at a time until it's all in there. I'm looking for a dough that's a little bit stiffer, a little bit drier than what I would normally use for making regular bread. I want to see it separate well from this side of the bowl as it's kneading. You can knead this by hand, of course. I'm being lazy and I'm doing it in the machine. And I'm going to knead this for about five to six, seven minutes in the machine. So let's get this started on. I'm going to start this at number two. And start working in my flour. All right, I have been kneading this dough now for a while. I want to show you something. No sticking to the side of the bowl. It's clean in there. In the meantime, I have greased a large bowl with some butter. Just going to press my dough down in there, move it around to get it all nicely coated. And then I'm going to cover this with plastic wrap and let this sit in a warm place for 45 minutes to an hour to let this dough rise. I need it to double in bulk. If it takes a little bit longer, then I'll wait whatever it takes. So there is my dough after it's been rising for just over an hour. I'm going to punch this down a little bit and flour a work surface here and just shape this roughly into a ball. Flour it. And then I want to cut this into 12 roughly equal size, not 12, 8 roughly equal size pieces. And then my next step is to shape these into bagels. I lined a baking sheet here with some parchment paper to hold these bagels. And I want to get these kind of into a little bit of a round ball shape. You can twist it into itself to try to force a nice round shape. Pinch it together on the bottom. And then work it kind of flat and then start making a hole in the middle with your finger. And get your hands in there and just kind of stretch it out a little bit. You can make a pretty good size hole if you want, like a donut, because as this rests it'll come back together again. It's the elasticity that's in that dough. It'll bring it together. It's that simple to make a bagel. And then in the meantime, I'm going to be heating my oven up to 470, 425 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 220 degrees Celsius. And I'm also going to be heating a large pot of water on the stove because bagels get boiled before they get baked. At least the good New York bagels do. I wanted to show you a trick that I saw on TV when someone was making bagels and I thought it was kind of a neat trick. They made their hole, got their fingers in there, opened it up and then they twisted it around their finger to stretch the hole. If you like doing that, that's fine. I think it's a kind of a cute little trick. So there are my eight bagels. I'm going to cover these with plastic, let them rest for 10 minutes while I'm heating up my oven again to 425 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 220 degrees Celsius, and I'm also at the same time heating a large pot of water on the stove to boil these. My water is coming up to the boil. One source said that the genuine, genuine New York bagels are boiled in salted water, so I'm adding two tablespoons of salt to that water. 
And then I'm going to lower my bagels in there one or two at a time. And boil them for at least a minute on each side. All right, let's talk about garnish. I split these up between two sheets because they got so large after boiling. I'm going to, I made an egg wash with some, with one egg and I added some water and beat that up pretty well. I'm going to leave two plain and I'm going to cover two with just egg wash. Painting those nice and just a thin layer of egg wash on the outside. And then I'm going to sprinkle these two with sesame seeds. And then finally my last two. My oven in the meantime has come up to full temperature. And I'm going to cover these with poppy seeds. Shouldn't say cover, just garnish these with poppy seeds. And that's it. Now these are ready to go into the oven. Again, they're going to bake for, let's see, what did I say? I think it's 20 to 25 minutes these are going to bake. I'm going to set the oven for 10 minutes, put these in side by side like so and then after 10 minutes I'm going to switch them so that they bake evenly. So there they are fresh from the oven. They look great. These baked for 22 minutes. After 22 minutes I decided they had browned enough so I took them out of the oven. Now I just have to wait for these to thoroughly cool down so that I can slice them. I think I'm going to toast one and butter it to see how it tastes. There's one of my bagels that has cooled down enough that I think I can slice this open and see what it looks like on the inside. Very tender. Oh, beautifully tender. Nice white crumb inside. I'm going to toast that and then see what it tastes like. So there it is. Toasted a nice golden brown and lightly buttered. The last step is to see how good it tastes. Been just waiting to taste these, waiting for them to cool. Mm -hmm. Nice chewy texture, a little bit of saltiness. Perfect bagel as far as I'm concerned. So excuse me, I'm going to go enjoy my bagel. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.